Hello and welcome to this first tutorial in the Royal Society of Edinburgh and British Computer Society's Intermediate Course in Computing Science. For this course we'll be using the package BYOB, which is very like Scratch, so if you've used Scratch before this will be very familiar. If you haven't, don't worry because it's really easy to learn. I'm going to open up BYOB. I'm going to maximise my window to make best use of the screen space available. Well, you can see at the top it says that this is BYOB based on Scratch by MIT. And the overall look of the program is almost exactly the same as Scratch. The most obvious differences are the main character is different to the familiar Scratch cat, but you can easily change that. And at the top we have the green flag, the red stop button, but we also have a pause button. And that allows us to pause a program and then continue it from where we left off without having to stop the program altogether. Well, the first thing we're going to do is create a haunted house game. So clicking on stage and backgrounds, I choose a new background using the import button. I go into the itching for more folder and choose the haunted house stage background. Let's get rid of that previous background. I'm now going to add a script it's simply going to play a soundtrack whilst my game runs. So into control, when the green flag is clicked, forever, play a sound. But I'm not going to choose pop, I'm also going to import a new sound. It's a music loop, and it's a top one called cave. Let's get rid of pop, and that works fine. And I'm going to play sound cave until done forever. And when I press the green flag, that sound's going to play. OK, I'm going to introduce a different sprite into the game. So get rid of the default one. Choose a new sprite. Itching for more, and it's our old friend, the Scratch Cat. Now you can see straight away that the Scratch Cat is much too big to fit through the doors of the haunted house. So we're going to just shrink him down a bit. Click away from the cat to deselect the Shrink Sprite tool and just check that he's small enough to fit through. Let's give the cat some code to make it work. When the green flag is clicked, and we're going to carry out the following steps forever, that is, for however long the program's running. So by pulling out an if block, If key up arrow is pressed, we're going to point the cat up the way and move it five steps. And every time it moves, we're going to go to the next costume. Because if we look at costumes, the cat has two costumes, which can give the impression of it moving. Now let's see if that works. Well it does, but the cat's pointing up the way, so let's click the only face left and right button to force the cat to stay this way up. Now instead of creating another three ifs for each of the other three directions, let's just duplicate them using the rubber stamp tool. And I can duplicate the pair. And you can see that the if command slightly changes shade when it's inside the forever loop. And this is one of the features of BYOB, to make it a bit clearer when one block is inside another block. Now let's change to down arrow, right arrow, pointing right, and left arrow, pointing left. And to start our program,
However, the cat seems to be able to go through the walls, which isn't right. So the last thing we're going to put in is an if touching color, and we click on the color here and sample the color of the walls, which is just plain white. We'll say move negative five steps. So the cat will bounce back off the wall whenever it touches that color. Let's see if that works. So there we are. We have all the code working for our cat. What we haven't done, however, is give it a sensible name. And this is a really important thing in programming. So you can easily identify different things in your program. So before we leave the cat, let's give it a sensible name. And in fact, that's probably something we should have done straight away. Now pause the screencast and build up your basic haunted house game. We're now going to add a second character to our game. And being a haunted house, this has to be a ghost. So choose a new sprite from file, come out of the itching for more costumes and into fantasy. And I'm going to choose this character here. I'm immediately going to give it a sensible name. Make sure it can only face left and right and shrink it so it's a similar size to the cat. And this ghost is going to chase the cat. So when clicked, forever, point towards the cat and move half a step. Let's test this. There we go. So moving on to the cat, let's add a if touching ghost will make the cat meow. And I'm going to broadcast a message or event. So both the cat and the ghost can do something. We're going to restart the game, so let's call this Restart. So when the cat receives Restart, it's going to go to its starting position of negative 200, 140, which is up around here somewhere. And when the ghost receives Restart, The ghost will go to 200, negative 140, which is down around there somewhere. Now pause the video and make those changes to your program. Now the final thing we're going to add to our program is a bonus sprite that adds to a score when our character collects it. So I'm going to choose a new sprite. Move up into the Things folder. And it has to be a wizard's hat. Once again, reduce the wizard's hat in size and pop it inside a room. Now before we do anything else, we have to create a variable, a container for our score. So clicking on the variables button, make a variable and we'll call this score. Leave it set on all sprites and click OK. Notice if you tick this box, the score disappears and appears on the screen. So let's move it over into this room and we can now put a script in the hat. So when the flag is clicked, we'll make sure that we show this sprite and then start repeating forever. And we'll say at any point, if this sprite is touching the cat, so the cat has collected it, let's hide the sprite, change our score by, we'll say this is worth 50 points, 
and we'll wait a certain amount of time. I'm going to make this a random number between 5 and 10 seconds. You might want to make that a higher value, but between 5 and 10 will work nicely for testing for the moment. And when that time has passed, let's show the hat again. Now let's test our program to see if that works. And there we are, a finished haunted house game.